Welcome to Nødarheim. My name is Rune. I'm going to show you around a bit, tell you about Vikings and some history. Burası sanırım bir Viking evi. Gördüğünüz gibi. Çok fazla hayvan postu var tabii ki de etrafta. Kullandıkları eşyalar. Tabii at çok önemli bir hayvan onlar için. Hem savaşlarda hem de etini yiyorlar. At eti de yiyorlar. Çok fazla kap kaçaklarını görüyoruz. Viking köyünde. Aa, bak burada herhalde şey çekiç mekiç buradaki onların savaş aletlerini yaptıkları yer ateş yakıyorlardır burada muhtemelen ama şu anda kapalı Köy çok güzel bir köy. Yani şu iki dağın heybetine bakar mısın? Onun arasında bir vadiye kurulmuş evet. ve gerçek anlamda çok iyi yaşatıyorlar. Do you play the Turkish instruments? Yes, I'm learning the ney as well, but it's very difficult. Ney? Yeah. What, what else can you play? Uh, only those two. Ney and? Oud. Oud. Yeah, because it sounds so incredibly beautiful. Really? Much more beautiful than Viking music or other <laughs> European music. The music from the Middle East is amazing. So you work here? Yes, I do. What brings you here? <laughs> um, Your ancestors also Viking? Mm, not that I know of, but I'm Swedish, so I assume. Uh, Denmark, are. Swedish, and Norway, they, are, they yeah. are the Vikings, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And I like Viking history. It's nice to be here. Norway is the first beautiful for me as well. It's very different from the Swedish nature. And really? The money in Norway is better. <laughs> that has some part to do with it, of course. <laughs> We all need it. That's perfect. Perfect. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Have a nice day. Nice to meet Goodbye. You. I can only say selam. Selam. Okay. Someone is beautiful. Güzel. Çok yeah. güzel. Yeah, that's a good one. But I, I always told me fistik gibi sin. Fistik. Fist. But it's not something I will say to the lady. Fistik gibi sin. Yeah, it's sort of you're beautiful. But... <laughs> Have you ever been in Turkey? No. Oh, okay. I would love to go there. It seems lovely. Yeah. Huh? Also, yeah. it's cheap. Yeah. But when you compare with Norway, yeah. that yeah. Norway is really it's really Sweden as well. Really? Wow. Since people are the only ones that say it's uh, the similar in price. I heard that probably it's not true, but they say Norwegian people and Swedish people are not really like say get along together. We're like brothers. Ah, okay. Like brothers, brothers can fight a little bit. We're really <laughs> used to each other. But okay. Danish ones with the language. They're more difficult, and their language is very difficult to understand. Can Can you speak Nor Norwegian? <coughs> Uh, no, I understand it. I can speak it, but usually the Norwegian and Swedish people we understand it. So. Uh, What's your name, by the way? My name is Isak. What's your name? Arda. Arda. Yeah. And your girlfriend? Uh, Özlem. Özlem and Arda. Cool. Goodbye, Isak. I will see you later. Hello. Uh, can I record? Yeah, of course you can. Okay. Yeah, for the guy the third? I think so. Yeah. So, welcome to Nördarheim. My name is Rune, and I'm going to show you around a bit, tell you about Vikings and some history. First of all, I want to tell you what Vikings are. A lot of people have an idea that Vikings is a kind of a civilization or a kind of an ethnic group, but it's not. It's a profession, it's something you do, more than something you are. The word Viking means pirate or sea warrior. And when you are at home in Norway, Denmark or Sweden in the Viking age, you're not a Viking. Then you're a Norseman, Dane or Swede. And most of these people are farmers. But farmers in Scandinavia, they are a bit different from farmers in the rest of Europe. In Norway, there is a law that says that every adult free man has to have a spear, a shield and a hand weapon at home. And these farmers, they know how to use them because this is a warrior culture. 
So it's when these farmers go abroad and start pillaging and plundering other people, that's when you're a Viking. And this is something you normally do in the summertime. And because it's nice to sail in the ocean and when the summer is over, then you're going back to being a farmer again. Everyone is farmers in Scandinavia in this time period. Huh. Some are tradesmen, some are craftsmen, but people didn't call themselves Vikings at all. Mm. Because a Viking is a pirate, a bandit, and you don't want to be a bandit, not even in Scandinavia. Mm. It's not something you call yourself. Okay. And the idea we, uh, we can see in the movies and series now, it's a very popular uh, way to picture the Vikings. It was not like that in the originally, because it's co completely different from the, the original way to be a Viking, actually. If you are going and raiding other people, then you are a Viking. Then you go Viking. Just like a pirate. Pirates of Scandinavia, yeah. So, and also in the Viking Age, people didn't call themselves Vikings. They call themselves Norsemen. If you are from Norway, you are a Norwegian. So, so originally the word Viking means pirate or sea warrior, and nothing more than that. Uh, the most popular hand weapon, at least among Norwegian Vikings, is the battle axe. The most important thing with the battle axe, it has to be fast, because you want to strike your opponent before he can strike you. Therefore, the axe has to be light. They look very cool, but they're not very practical, because they're way too heavy and way too slow. There's no point with a big, heavy, cool axe in your hand if you already have another lighter and faster axe in your forehead. So speed is much more important than looking cool. Normally, you have only one axe with you, so you don't throw it away. Axe throwing looks cool in movies, but in reality, you don't throw your weapon away like that. <laughs> your enemy won't give it back to you. And then you're standing there without any weapon, and that is yeah. stupid in the middle of the battle. So do they really throw their no. weapons now? No. <laughs> you can if you are about to win the battle, and there's someone, the enemy is uh, running away, then you can oh, okay. throw it. But uh, axes and weapons are very valuable. Yeah. They are too precious. Yeah. So don't throw your weapon away like that. <laughs> this axe is a combination of a weapon and a tool. This is called a bearded axe because it has a long beard. And this long beard is make a long cutting edge without necessarily having a bigger and heavier blade. This long cutting edge is very good for shaving and leveling planks when you're building ships and building houses. But it's also a hand in the battle. Normally your enemy they are hiding behind shields. So to get past the shields and kill them, you can hook your axe behind the shield and pull it down. And then the man next to you can stab them with a spear or a sword. Uh, in Norway we have found many hundred axes from Viking graves, but we have never ever found anyone with two heads. They're just fantasy. Ah. The Viking Age starts in 793 with the attack on Lindisfarne. And Lindisfarne is a tiny little island east of England with a monastery and a church. And in monasteries and churches all over Europe they have something that Vikings or pirates really like. Gold and silver. Monasteries and churches all over Europe, they're full of gold and silver in the form of crosses, candles and bowls and plates and other decorative items. And it's only protected by monks and priests, so it's very easy to steal. And since this gold and silver belongs to gold you don't really believe in, and it doesn't seem like the god is using it anyway, just lays there, so why not go and take it? Yeah. And that is the start of about 300 years of pirates or Vikings raiding from Scandinavia and throughout Europe. This is the time age we call the Viking Age. And when you are living in this place, maybe uh, in, in the Viking Age, it's not very flat around there and it's not very uh, fertile soil. So maybe you want to go to England because there is flat and fertile and you can build farms every day. So it's not a problem. To, it's much better to, way to live in England than in Norway. Vikings from Norway and Denmark, they went uh, west to England, Scotland and Ireland and they went south to France, Spain and into the Mediterranean because that is the closest target. From here to England is about four or five days of sailing. In one time period, four-fifths of England was ruled by Danish Vikings or Danes. This is what we call the Dane law. This is before England is even invented. England was divided into five different kingdoms and four of them was controlled by Danish Vikings. One third of Ireland and the northern parts of Scotland and the islands around like Shetland, Orkney Islands and Faroe Islands was ruled by Norwegians or Norsemen. Swedish Vikings then normally went east across the Baltic Sea and into today's Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. And they had an early king called Rurik. And this Rurik he founded a kingdom called Novgorod or Kievrus. And his people or his tribe, they called themselves Rus. That means men that rose. Mm. And this is how you get the name Russia in the end. 
They established trade route along the Russian rivers down to the Black Sea and down to Constantinople, that's Istanbul today. And Constantinople was the major, most important city in Europe back then. So Vikings came to Istanbul? Yeah, they did, yeah. A okay. lot of them. But there were no Ottoman empires in that period? No, that is before the Ottoman. This is yes. the Byzantine Empire. Okay. Yeah. A lot of Vikings also served as mercenaries in the royal guard of the Byzantine Emperor. They are called the Varangian Guards. They are Scandinavians. We also normally say that the Viking Age it ends in 1066 because that is the year of the last big invasion done by Scandinavians in England. And it's the Norwegian king, Harald Hårråde. He has a big army and he invades England in the north. He takes control of the areas around York, but at the Battle of Stamford Bridge he gets an arrow in his throat and he dies. And then the Norwegian army, they are surrounded by the English army and they are defeated. And this is what we can call the beginning of the end of the Viking Age. By this time, most of the people in Scandinavia, they have been Christian for 150 years already. And when you're Christian, it doesn't look very well when you're attacking churches and monasteries around in Europe. I heard that Vikings are pagans. No, a Viking is a pirate. But I mean, it doesn't have anything to, be, to do with the religion at all. They don't believe something? Yeah, in the beginning, people in Scandinavia, they believed in uh, they had Norse mythology. But yeah. half of the Viking Age, Scandinavia was Christian. Okay, so in the Syria, they yeah, told them forget, they are pagan. Forget, forget they... about the series. Okay. It's a completely wrong image of uh, the history. Uh, so they don't sacrifice humans? Yeah, they did in the beginning, when they were pagans. Uh, okay, I told you, are they pagans before? Most people in Scandinavia was pagans before they became Christian. Okay, so the, Christ, the Vikings are pa were pagans before they became Christians? Uh, the Vikings is a pirate. Either you are a Christian or a pagan. You can say Norwegians was uh, pagans first, mm -hmm. then Norwegians became Christians. Okay. And you are still a Viking sometimes. Because Viking, as I said, is a pirate. Okay, I understand You that. can be a Christian pirate too. Okay, okay, I understand. Yeah. Actually, half of the Viking Age Scandinavia was Christian. And the first uh, Christian king in Scandinavia was the Danish king Harald Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. And it was about the year 800, uh, ni almost the uh, year 900. And he was very, he was very bad Viking. He was raiding a lot, even if he was Christian. You can say sometimes I compare Vikings with uh, extremely aggressive tourists. If you are at home, you're not a tourist. You're a tourist only when you're abroad. And the same with the Viking. You're only a Viking when you're abroad and raiding. Are they big guys? No, not. Yeah, maybe a little bit bigger or taller than uh, average people in Europe, maybe, but uh, not much. Are they really good fighters? Yeah, they are good fighters because this is a warrior culture. If you are a kid in Scandinavia, they are training with the weapons from your kid, like ah, okay. uh, swords and bows and arrows, very early. Vikings or Scandinavians, like most of the armies in Europe, they are often fighting in battle formations called shield walls. So you're making a defensive wall of shields against your enemy. If you are attacked by horses or cavalry, long spears in the front is a good idea. Then you can plant the end of the spear in the ground and then you wait for the horses to come. In the second line of the shield wall, you can also use spears. Then you can use them in between the men in front of you and still reach your enemy. Uh, maybe in the third or fourth line, you have lighter and shorter spears called javelins, and they are for throwing. So you throw over your friends and into the enemy lines. And all the way in the back, you can have archers. They can shoot arrows over and into the enemy lines. This way, the whole army can fight at the same time. Not only the first two lines, but everyone can fight at their own distance. Makes it a bit more effective. Swords, like axes and sometimes spears, they are always used in combination with the shield. Then you can also make some noise before you start fighting. So Vikings never had horns on the helmets. They don't have horns? Never, never, never. One of the reasons why still people believe they had horns is Richard Wagner. He wrote an opera called Ring of the Nibelungen or Ride of the Valkyries. The first time they put that opera up in New York in the early 1900s, they put wings and horns on the helmets of the actors to make it look cool and nice. And that idea was adopted by Walt Disney and then Hollywood and football supporters, hockey supporters, Asterix, souvenir shops all around the world, but never Vikings. 
However, we have some images on rune stones and some tapestry from the Viking Age. With people with horn-like structures on the heads, these are used in religious ceremonies and they are used by priests and shamans. Oh, so and, uh, yeah. some of them use... Uh, priests and shamans for uh, religious activities, mm. okay. not in battle. Okay. Sometimes the Vikings they accepted silver and gold as a payment for leaving a town alone or for just going back home again. For example, the English or the French king could pay them up to five, six tons of silver and gold to make them go away. Now, of course, then they went happy home. But when they came home, they told this to other people. So, of course, more people want to go to England or France to get paid to go home again. Yeah, and there are different types of ships. Some ships are built for cargo or for trading, and they are a bit wider and shorter. And then you have warships. They are long and narrow because they have to be fast. And warships, they are called long ships. Long ships, they often have an animal head in front of the ship. This animal head is there to protect the people inside the boat against bad spirits. It could be a wolf, it can be a horse, a serpent, dragon, eagle, whatever. Depends on what the owner of the ship likes. How many people are they? In Norway, it was about 250,000 people living. Total? I mean, Norway, but then Denmark and uh, Sweden. Denmark total? was about 400,000, and Sweden was maybe 300, 300. So they're 000. around 1 million? Yeah. Wow. People living in Scandinavia. 5% of them was Vikings sometimes. Are they the gods? Yeah, these are some of the gods. I know Odin, yeah. Freya, Loki. Yeah, can you find Odin? Odin? This one is yes, Odin. Yes, correct, that's Odin. Oh, okay, this is Odin. He's the one night god. And he had a son called Thor. This is the Thor? Yeah, this is Thor. Thor related with the weather? Thunder and lightning. Thunder and lightning, yeah. okay. This is Loki. L Luke. Yeah, okay. Luke or Luke. This is the one who makes jokes. Yeah, he is the one who is not as good as the other ones. He's not directly evil, he's just a little bit misunderstood. He's like the black sheep of the family. And he's the god of cheating and lying, betrayals and stealings and stuff. The other gods they don't trust him very much. Ah, okay. But I didn't see this one. Yeah, this is Frey. This is the woman. No. This is Frey, god, Frey. Of, god of fertility and virility and good harvest. And he has a sister called Freya, and ha. that's her. Okay, this is this one. This is Freya, yes. This is Freya? Yeah, she doesn't uh, look very pretty, but you can see, clearly see, she is a woman, though. Yeah, she is a woman, and you can clearly see this is a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, because he is a god of fertility, yeah. Is that real when they do offerings to the gods, yeah. they sacrifice nine humans, nine... Yeah, that happens uh, once every seven years only. And people who is gonna be sacrificed, yeah. are they happy with it? Uh, um, we don't know. Okay. No one knows. Okay. Most likely not, maybe. But maybe they didn't have any choice. Hmm. But the human sacrifices didn't happen very often, very rare. Normally you're sacrificing blood of an animal, actually. You don't say, uh, yeah, to sacrifice the blood of an animal, you have to kill an animal. But uh, there are um, descriptions of uh, blot, that's what we call it. The blot is a ceremony for sacrifice, sacrificing mm. thing. And there's a description of a blot in the sagas, and that happened in the northern parts of Norway. And they had several barrels of blood from horses, and they painted the inside of the wall of the temples with this blood. It's very bloody. But of course you have to, and also and after they have killed these horses or animals, they eat it and you yeah. have a big feast. They do feast so much. Yeah, so they have a big feast with eating horse meat and pig and cow and whatever and drink a lot of beer. When we have, sometimes you have ceremonies here, and then you have this full of blood. It's actually some blood left in it. This full of blood, and we give this blood to the gods like this. Okay. Not him. Why? Because he's the god of cheating and lying and betrayals. But she's still god? No. <laughs> yeah, he's a god, but we don't. Uh, there's no point of uh, sacrifice anything to him. Because ah. he would just take the sacrificing and don't give anything back. Okay. So these are pagan beliefs? These are pagan uh, gods, yes. Okay. And we don't have any heaven or hell. But we have something called Valhall, and Valhall is where you go if you die bravely in battle. 
That is when Valkyries come riding down from the sky, picks up the bravest dead warriors on the battlefield and brings them to Valhall, where they feast until Ragnarok. What, what do you think about Ragnarok? Ragnarok is the end of the world. That is the apocalypse. During Ragnarok, there are two wolves called Skoll and Hate, uh -huh. and they eat and swallow the sun and the moon. Hmm. So as everything turns completely dark, and around the whole world is a giant serpent called Jormungandr, and he uh, attacks everything. Attacks uh, gods and human beings and everything. And in the cave under the ground, there's a big, big wolf called Fenris. Mm -hmm. He also gets loose and also attacks everything. And then there's a war or battle between the gods and the giants. But at the end of this battle, there's a huge fire giant called Surt. And he wakes up and he burns the whole world to ashes. That's the end of the world. Right. But uh, there are five gods who survive and they create a new world. So it's not completely over, it's just a new beginning. There must be a tree, life tree or something. Yeah, itself, that is huh? the middle of the center of the universe. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, yeah, we haven't seen it. <laughs> okay. no, and it's an ash tree. And the whole universe in Norse mythology is made out of nine different worlds. And uh, our world is just one of the nine. Okay, amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So that's what I have. Thank you for Thank uh, following me around. Thank and, uh, you very much. Yeah, I hope you are learned. I'm sorry I have to uh, destroy some of the ideas. The Viking series are some of is correct, but they have uh, taken a lot of names, historical names mm -hmm. and uh, historical events mm -hmm. and historical places and put it in the hat yeah. and shake it around and make a new story out of ah, it. Ah, okay, all right. So it's like a, it's, it's a f fictional fantasy or fictional uh, history or something. Right. It's not the real. And uh, I can also say that Ragnar Lothbrok, he was a chieftain or leader, but he was not very important. And he was not the one who attacked Lindisfarne the first time. And Ragnar Lothbrok and uh, Rollo was not brothers. We know that Rollo existed, but if Ragnar existed, there were 60 years between them. Yeah, and they probably never met. What about the wife of Ragnar Lothbrok? The, the Lagerta, she, she, she was a real uh, person, but uh, probably not married to Ragnar at all. They mix up all the stories yeah, and create that. a yeah, new one. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much yes, for your you're effort. welcome. Goodbye. Yeah, bye bye. Arkadaşlar, şimdi çok şanslıydık. Sadece biz turdaydık. Bu tur ücretsiz bir tur ve şey verilmedi. Bütün Viking tarihinde, Viking ile ilgili bilinmeyen her şeyi anlattı. Şimdi size çok ilginç bir şey göstereceğim. Viking köyünü gezerken. Böyle. Dedim ki, işte ateş vardı. Şöyle dedim, yanda bir şey var. Bu ne? Sonra biraz düşündüm. Ne oldu hakkında? Burası arkadaşlar bir Viking tuvaleti. Eğer bir gün yolunuz buraya düşerse şöyle oturup kendi <gülüyor> sakın tuvaletinizi yapmayın ama bir fotoğraf çekilebilirsiniz diye düşünüyorum. Çok güzel bir yermiş gerçekten de arkadaşlar. Hem Viking tarihini öğreniyorsunuz. Hem burada o dokuyu, o kokuyu, o hissi alıyorsunuz. Hem de kendinize bir şeyler katmış oluyorsunuz. Vikingleri gezdik, onların tarihini öğrendik. Eğer yolunuz Norveç'e düşerse kesinlikle Viking köyüne uğramanızı ben öneririm. Bugün ilk güzel yılan sürenin sonuna geldik arkadaşlar. Videoyu beğenirseniz ya da abone olmadığınızda abone olursanız beni çok mutlu edersiniz. Bir sonraki bölümde görüşmek üzere. Kendinize iyi bakın.